Okay, so um, we've called to order. We've reviewed the agenda. No members of the public had anything. We're cruising along with our regular business. Um, did anybody have any comments on the meeting notes? Thank you, Allie, for doing that. Do you want to unmute? Yeah. Um, so I noticed two errors in my notes. Um, one is I said the meeting was on the 4th and not the 2nd because we were having the meeting on April 4th. So I just think I just put that. And then I forgot Valerie's last name. So she's like a rock star, which is Valerie. Um, but other than well, that, those I'm going to be a, a one named celebrity. Just I think Val. so. That's it. Just Val. Mm -hmm. um, so those are the two things that I picked up from the notes, rereading them again. So I will make adjustments and then send them off again. If Thank there's you. any other things. Okay. Just a reminder that everybody's names are listed on the agenda in the column. So, so do I need to leave them in the notes as well? Is that helpful though, to put them there too? Oh, whoever's att attendees, yes, they should be. Perfect. Listed. Okay. Awesome. She's just saying Thanks. if you for, if you um, need to look up somebody's name or spelling, it's See, there. Yes. <laughs> Thank um, and you. Actually, you raise a good point there, which is um, that Keely, we're glad to have you on, but can you either put your last name in the um, chat box yes. or unmute so that Ali can capture that? Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Um, any other comments or observations on the notes? Okay. I guess we need to vote. I don't. All in favor? You also accept them as directed. Thank you, Chris. Rob, I think just gave us a second. <laughs> Thank you. Great. All in favor? Aye or thumbs up. Okay. Great. Any concerns or op opposition? Alrighty. Moving right along. What happened to my agenda? <laughs> this is what happens when I only have one screen. <clears throat> oh, there it is. Okay, um, update on funding. Um, Valerie, do you have anything to add for us there, either on the funding or on any um, new ideas or suggestions that have come through? Well, the ideas and suggestions keep coming through. I, I continue to make note of them. They don't all have uh, dollars associated with them. So I'm not sure how best to summarize them, but a lot of them have to do with infrastructure, um, public health in terms of uh, improving buildings. Uh, Can we energy. update that little um, table that we had last time? Last time we said on 4-4, we had nine requests so far um, and you know what categories they were in. Um, we, I mean, we can do that for the next meeting, but. You want just numbers, just, just quantity, just like, just. Yeah, it wasn't, numbers. I mean, we did have, yeah, the su suggestions so far last time totaled, you know, 792,000 or something. Um, but then the dollar figure is less important, I think, than just that we see that, you know, how many have come in and whether they're from citizens or, um, is, nonprofits, is there a way business. Val, is there a way that you can just share the matrix, maybe just internally to the group? Well, well to be honest with you, I'm still going through the list that you developed. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sorry, it, it was a pretty extensive list, and um, and you you made an effort to categorize them, and I'm not sure that that uh, that um, anyway, I'm not sure that those are the right categories. So that's what I've been doing this afternoon was trying to plug okay. those in. Okay. Maybe we'll do, we can do that table for our next meeting, just so that the committee has a sense of what's continuing to come in and, and maybe we'll be adding to it at the next meeting because we'll have some. Oh, folks. for sure. And in fact, I suggest that uh, once I get Ian's, in, Ian's uh, input uh, is the last of it that I need to, to update. And once I do that, I'll just email the whole thing out to people and you guys can just look through it. Yeah. Okay. One, one thing we can do too, Val, is just push it out to the Dominion Tech site and then just send out the link for everyone to have access to it. Okay. Okay. That's easy enough. Okay. 
I like um, a, a shorter version than that whole matrix. It's a very, right. very complex matrix. So I was mm -hmm. thinking we might um, just have a little dashboard like we had at the, the last meeting of that slide. Um, mm -hmm. But I can I can read the matrix and update the slide myself um, mm -hmm. to okay. present a more simple face on this. Um, and so I'm going to do that for myself because I don't want to try to have a conversation with the world using that matrix. I think it's just it's, it's critical for you to have it as our town administrator. Mm -hmm. And we ultimately as a group will want to engage with that. But mm -hmm. on a month to month basis, as the ideas come rolling in, I just wanna know how many requests, right. what areas are they coming from? What eligible uses do they fall under? I don't even really care how much the money's worth because we know there's gonna be eligible requests way in excess of the amount of money we have. So that's not as important to me. What mm -hmm. I'm interested in is, you know, just those key features. So I can work with you to get that for our next meeting. Okay. Could could we have some um, subcategories under the infrastructure? I mean, like under infrastructure, I'd be interested to know uh, what kinds of areas people are expressing concerns in. Well, it's interesting yeah. that in the uh, in the categories that are listed on this thing infrastructure mainly focuses on water and drinking water and broadband not other public infrastructure like roads or buildings or things like that so that comes under revenue replacement which is the broader category which is where government uh, investments and all, a lot of other uh, contributions are made right i i just wonder whether um we need to be sorting it by what categories of funding it is at this point. I think at this point, we want to know what people are concerned about. Mm -hmm. and, then, uh, and then we'll look at what the categories are and what the amount of funding is and see what we're gonna do in each category. But right. I, think, sure. I, I think we're kind of going at it kind of backwards. Well, so we're not I, really doing, all we're doing is collecting the information. Valerie has it collected on a very complex matrix. I want to look at it collected on a simple matrix. Um, no, but all we're I, doing I is would, collecting I it. would rather look at it on a complex uh, matrix. So I think that people should have that option. Sure. That's why Chris, Chris suggested sending the link out so that you'll be able to, everybody on the committee will, will be able to look at the complex matrix anytime they want. Great. In progress even. Good. Great. I'll, I'll send that link as soon as I finish with uh, Ian's two page list. Was that a select board list or just an Ian list? It was, it was presented at the select board meeting. Fortunately, it's not single spaced. Um, any other updates on funding? No other news. Okay, great. Um, so focus group planning, um, we have uh, one ready to go this week um, <coughs> and uh, two well along in progress um, and uh, one that we still need to put together. So um, I don't know, Allison, do you or uh, Rob want to talk about the one coming up this week? Um. So my final list is 11 participants. Our list is 11 participants. I'm sending out a reminder email tomorrow to everyone um, that responded with a yes, and I have one maybe. Um, the maybe also has given me her list of wants and needs um, in case she actually cannot make it. And that's Sue Owen Jankowski, Owen Jankowski who is um, the Bristol Preschool um, individual. Um, I don't know. I think I, um, I just want to know like what our role will be. I know that there's going to be guiding questions, but what those questions are um, and the format, um, it's 5.30 to 6.30. Um, I'm going to get there a little bit earlier. I tend to be somebody who needs to get there early to like get my bearings. Um, but what exactly will it look like? Can you and maybe we don't know. The location? Where will, where it will be? I think it's the conference room at the town at um, town hall. Okay. And do we have somebody? 
who will be physically present to be able to operate the owl system? So that I don't know. What is what is that exactly? Okay, well, if Meredith is, is going to be there and if she's willing to be there in person, yep. then, she, then she can, she probably can operate the owl system. So okay, that's something we should definitely keep in mind for all of them um, because um, we are planning to do the next one there as well. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how to operate the owl. Hmm. So it's, it's not too difficult. No. One thing, um, so tomorrow night's meeting ends at seven and that's gonna have to be a very hard stop. I've got a planning commission meeting coming in there at seven o'clock. It's a regular scheduled meeting um, on Tuesday nights. So. Uh, oh, Tuesday the seventh, wait. Tomorrow, oh, Thursday, you're doing Thursday, May 5th. I thought it was tomorrow night you guys were doing it. No, no Thursday. I don't, no, I'm, I don't believe there's anything for the DRV on the 17th, so we're okay. Good. Okay. But how about May 17th, which is when the next group meets, which is a Tuesday? I don't believe there's anything on the, I'll, I'll check my schedule in the office tomorrow. Great. Um, so, uh, Jessica, do you want to talk us again through sort of what that process will look like? Um, so, um, Allison, you <laughs> and Rob will both be there Thursday night, right? Um, I will also be there Thursday yep. night um, as an observer or as a helper. Um, okay. So, you know, I'm happy to take direction. Um, and I'm not sure. Ex I think we probably need to touch base again about the questions. Um. Yeah, I was imagining that there'll be like a little intro, like I have some little things for us to do like an intro. Um, mm -hmm. I don't want it to get like too wordy and feeling and all of that stuff because I just yeah. want us to get right right to the, <laughs> the meat of it. Yeah. Um, but um, having said that, like not knowing exactly what the flow of the questions are um, is just what what I'm interested in. And I'm sure Rob feels the same way. So usually for the introduction, you know, we'll we'll introduce ourselves and, and everybody can introduce themselves. And then we'll want to talk a little bit about the purpose. So since the idea is to try to get them to think, you know, sort of big picture, to talk about, you know, what the source of funding is, why we're meeting with that group of people, what the purpose is. And then um, we can start going into the questions. It's really supposed to be like a conversation. The questions are there just to get people, you know, thinking and responding. So um, we can use the questions that you all develop, but we also don't have to stick with them. So like if the conversation starts to go off in a really cool direction, we can just keep going with it. Um, I like to think about having the questions there for if things don't go off in a good direction and you're all like staring at each other with awkward silence. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, you don't necessarily have to stick as closely to them um, since this one's more about idea generation. And so you have the sample questions that Porter and I put together. Um, so you could just use those if you wanted and, and update them, make sure they sound good to you and that you think that they're reflecting, you know, the sort of education interests that everybody will have. Um, and then what I usually do is I like to have at least two copies of the questions printed out. I mean, maybe one for each person from the committee so that um, one person can lead with asking questions, um, but somebody else can be a backup question answer, asker. So like, you know, if somebody says something that's a little bit confusing or you think an example would be helpful, they can sort of jump in and say, hey, can you give us an example of what you're thinking about? Um, and then to have at least one note taker if not more. And what I like to do is, is take my notes directly into the questions so that I sort of know what order they came in and what people are responding to. That's just me. Of course, you can just use pencil and paper or however you want to do it, but, but that's what I like to do. And like did we you, talk? Oh, go ahead, Allie. I was just going to ask, like, does our, does each group like sort of come up with like 
norms or guiding principles or is that something we all will have together as focus groups and we're all using the same ones or do we just quickly say you know like share the space and be respectful expect good intentions and then go from there because i know norm building can <laughs> take a while too um but sometimes it's just good to have reminders about sharing space like those who talk too much, maybe not to talk, and those who listen too much, maybe not to listen, but then I also don't want to put parameters on it either. So I don't know where I am. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. Yes, <laughs> no, I, you, I think I'm great. Send, uh, questions? Could you send those around again? Um, I did not send them around again. Um, and actually, I feel like we didn't have a, a, a further conversation about that. Um, so I can send them around again. Um, oh, or I you, can... included, you included this. Right, those were the notes from last time. Yeah, so that's, that's what we have, is what you presented last night. Right, and I think that included some feedback at last time's meeting. Okay. Um, but the overall take was that um, maybe fewer of the questions and simplify them. Um, and tailor to each group. But uh, back to the question about norms, um, I think that's a great point. I'm glad you raised it. I hadn't thought of that. Um, and I, I don't know, uh, you know, if you have some suggestions there, I think it's a great start. And um, maybe, you know, if you set something up, we can copy it in the other meetings. Jessica, do you usually use some sort of guiding principle when you're running these focus groups? Not usually. Usually it's more like research ethics, like making sure people understand why I'm collecting their information and what I'm going to do with it. Um, so I don't usually do that, but it's, it's absolutely a great idea if you wanted to talk about some. It might also just flow sort of naturally from talking about the purpose, like why are we meeting? What are we trying to do? And then it might be like, okay, we're here to exchange ideas. So, you know, let's listen to people and try to, you know, build on these suggestions and, and those sorts of things. But, you know, I think you're going to do a really good job with that. So I'll follow your lead. And to follow up on that, even though this is kind of moving head, shooting gun. Um, Allie, if you can talk to us, send an email after your meeting and just let us know how it went and what worked and what didn't so that those who follow can use your suggestions. Rob's running the meeting, so I don't know what's going on. <laughs> hey, Rob. <laughs> we haven't even talked about that yet. So maybe, I don't know, he and I will have to just do a quick exchange as to who's doing the talking and note taking. Yeah. That's great. And yeah. I mean, I have some notes from um, the from our first meeting that I had written sort of like summarizing the sort of, um, you know, why are we doing this? You know, who are we? What are, why are we doing this? And what's going to happen with this information? Um, so I can share that with you guys if you want to do that, or I can do that little piece at the beginning. Um, so, and I'll be there early too. Me too. But, um, I'll, I'll make a little note, note before of us. Okay. So just, so as far as the questions go, did, I didn't take good notes last meeting as we were all going through that. So has anything been circulated since last meeting with, okay, nothing updated related to that. Okay. I just wanted to be clear on that. Yeah. No, the only thing was um, when we sent out the notes and the slides, um, there are some questions in the slides. <clears throat> but I will send those out again to you guys um, so you can massage them a little bit for the particular group for youth and education. Uh, I don't think that, that my computer got any slides. Could you resend that? It came as a PDF today, two attachments and a note from Porter. Okay, well, my, my computer doesn't receive mail for about 12 hours after it's sent, so maybe it'll come to oh, Frustrating, yeah. Right, so it is, it is a problem. I mean, I, that's why I was a few minutes late to the meeting. I had to wait till oh, I got I didn't there. get anything today. 
Okay. Well, I will, I will just send it to everybody again, but it's just the, it's the slides. Um, so after I got the email from uh, Valerie with the Zoom meeting and with the notes, I sent it out mm -hmm. and said, here are the slides from last month's meeting as well to go along with the notes. See you tonight. Um, so that probably went out at like two o'clock this afternoon. Yeah, I wouldn't have gotten it yet. Okay. Do you want me to send it again or do you want I to? Would, I would love it. I would love it if you would send it again. And and also, uh, since one of the our meetings is um, at the very end, uh, I would love to know what people in, in the other groups are finding in terms of um, what questions do they wish they'd started with? You know, they might in when it's on the ground and running, um, they, they, they might tweak it and, and maybe subsequent groups can benefit from the earlier group's experience. That's a great idea. Um, just Betsy, I've I'll put the information, those links also on the town website. And if you could look in the chat, there's a link to the town webpage. So those files will be there as well by this evening. When you say in the chat, that's this thing down at the bottom of the screen that says chat. Correct. Click on that. No, I mean, probably, this, is, probably... this is like the first time I've ever done a Zoom. Yeah, okay. no, it's totally fine. Yeah, <laughs> this yeah. is a lot I yeah, don't there's, understand. There's, there's chat at the bottom. And if you click yeah. on that little, little button, it'll open up a side uh, window okay. and then there's a link to the town website. It's not there now. Those okay. those details that PDF, but I'll put them on as this meeting progresses this evening. Okay, thank you. Anything else that you guys need or questions that you have for Thursday? Does the Zoom, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh. Um, the, go ahead, sorry. Um, the, Val, the Zoom link, you will provide that for us. Is that correct? Good point. Uh, sure, I can do that. Okay. I wonder if we want to use the same Zoom link. Are they all going to be from the conference room or elsewhere? Hmm. Well, so far, I think the first three will be the business group we haven't determined yet, but. Okay. Um, if it works out, it seems like that's a good place. And because you have that capacity to do the Zoom, that would be super. Right. I wonder if we might as well use the same link for all, all of them from the conference room. OK. Yeah, I'll, I'll set it up that way. Thank you. Sure. And it sounds like it's not really clear how we learn how to use the system in the conference room. Is there a computer? How do you do OWL? I don't. I'm going to go on Thursday and learn. Great. Um, from whomever is teaching it, whether that's going to be Ian or Meredith or Valerie, and then, um, then I will be at all of the sessions and will make sure that I share that knowledge with everybody. Great, great, thank you. I'll send Meredith a note and her invite reminder because I'm going to send one to each person individually, and I'll ask her if she can help us with that on Thursday. Super. So if that's the, the business group is on Thursday? No, which is the? Ed, education is on Thursday. Okay, because um, I know I was on two committees and uh, I, have, I have not heard from um, whoever is running the business <clears throat> group. So I would get an invitation at some point to that. Yes, and in fact, um, again, we should probably, let's talk on the phone because I've sent out an email trying to coordinate a time for the business group. Um, so- Okay, um, I, haven't, I haven't seen that. I mean, right. I, I do open so, everything I get from you and I, I haven't seen okay. that. So let's let's talk on the phone um, and we'll make sure that, that, um, that we pick a date for that. That, would, that date has not been set. So we don't have a date yet for that. Um, so okay. there's a date. <laughs> The town, uh, uh, the people from the town, that's the group is on the 27th. Right, yes. that's a Friday. And I was thinking about sending on a Google poll to the municipal department heads and others, because I imagine for the department heads, a daytime meeting would be ideal. 
uh, and for other folks, it might not be ideal. So um, I it's I'm, not a group. I'm what? wondering which of the groups, I, I mentioned that the social worker from Mountain Health was very keenly interested in being invited to one of the groups and that I was told I'm not to do the inviting. And uh, so I'm just hopeful that, that you all have figured out which group to invite her to and that she will in fact get an invitation. Yes, uh, you had two ideas actually. You had also um, spoken to folks from the hub. Um, and so they are going to participate in um, uh, the school and youth one this week. Um, and then the social worker will be invited to the nonprofit one on the 17th. Okay, good. Um, Robin, Allison, is there anything else you guys need? Um, we'll be in touch and we'll see you Thursday. Yeah, um, I think, I don't know. <laughs> I think we're just going to be thrown into it and it's going to evolve. They're all going to be so very different. Um, and we're just going to, you know, hope for the best. <laughs> and Porter um, and I will be there. There'll be four of us. So it'll be good. Yeah. And I'll just take notes or do whatever you tell me to do. Great. So Tuesday, May 17th um, is the date set for the nonprofit one. We have lists from... Um, Sharon gave us a list of um, people who are on the town meeting um, nonprofits that get money from Bristol for serving Bristol residents. Um, and also we have a list of other groups and organizations in the, in the community. Um, so we'll send that out. Um, and so it's two weeks from tomorrow. So they'll have, um, you know, this week, hopefully to let us know if they can make it and then we'll follow up with them again next week. Um, and then send a reminder. So we're again, we're using um, Allison and Rob as sort of the template for that is give them the notice um, and then follow up and then a reminder. Um, and Porter, are you sending the initial email yeah. or are the, okay. Yeah, that, I think you probably, the last thing I think you guys heard from me was, um, do you have any additions to this or um, do you have emails for any of these groups I don't have emails from? Um, so, so that's that one. Ian, Porter, you, already, you already have that list developed, your invite list developed? Yes, uh, Sharon had sent me stuff um, and then I had the list that um, Meredith and I've used for the welcome packets. Mm. Okay. So together, I think it's about 40 names. I can't remember exactly, but. Porter. Ian got his hand up. Ian. For the focus groups, are you looking to have uh, any of the public join these, or would you prefer to keep it in the small amount of people that you asked? These are going to be small. Um, and then what we definitely want to reassure the public that we have every intention of going to them. We'll be talking about that. Um, in a few minutes, you know, other ideas for gathering info from the public, but our thought was first the focus groups and then um, the general public, which we can approach then in two ways. One is to just invite ideas, but also we can go to the public with some ideas and seek feedback, um, which might help foster more conversation. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Um, so let's see, Chris, Valerie, and Ian have been helping a lot with the uh, municipal employee one. So we have a, a, a date and you're gonna do a doodle poll to see about time, Valerie. Great. Yes. Okay. And then, um, yeah, uh, Ian, we'd love your help um, to help us reach out to businesses, but, um, Betsy, John, and I um, should put our heads together and find a date um, or a couple of dates that might work. And then we'll check Valerie again with you. Um, so um, we don't have to do that in the whole group, but maybe we can stay on the call when we finish up because 
we won't be going particularly over long today, I don't think. Um, and maybe we can pick that date tonight while we're on the Zoom call together, uh, Betsy, John, Ian, if that works. Sounds good. Yeah, I've been meaning to get to that. My apologies. Um, I've also been trying to communicate with Kate, the Fiscal Core person, and it's been difficult to reach her. So okay. that's that's another reason why it's a little bit slow at the moment. It's only May second, so if, if we can come up with a date and um, and it's clear in the conference room and we can set a date and time, then we can you know move ahead with that this week and and still do it in May. So that's great. All right, well, I'm excited to have these happen. Um, thanks everybody for your hard work um, in the smaller groups. And um, yeah, let's let's gather information and share it and then we'll have a big conversation about it at our next month's meeting. Any other thoughts, comments, or questions about the focus group thing? Um, one thing that might be helpful as each group sort of wraps up at the end of their session, you know, after everybody's left, is maybe to sort of debrief a little bit just about what you thought was important or good. So there will be the people who took notes and they can type those up, but just sort of a group analysis about, you know, what just happened in the session, what's really good. And then that's kind of nice because when you're sharing the notes back with the bigger group, I mean, maybe they'll sit down and read through the whole, you know, thing. But if you have at least a couple of bullet points, points or notes at the top about what you learned or what you saw that was that either backed up some an idea from another group or was really new and interesting those sorts of things might be good to share with the other group so that when they're doing their group if they hear an idea that you know lots of people are echoing then we'll know it's something really popular um, or if we hear a unique idea at least we'll know it's unique okay Okay. Um, Anthony, I see that you've joined the call. Um, I didn't know if you had anything in particular you wanted to share with us um, related to funding or what's happening in other groups, um, or are you just with us? Well, I'm, I mean, I'm with you guys. Uh, sorry, it took me a little bit longer to Hi. get on. Um, and I've talked with a couple of towns right now. Um, Virgins, Middlebury, Hinesburg are all still deciding what they're going to spend the funds on. I've been doing a little bit more research um, into the reporting aspects of it and how that fits in. I've also had discussions with our auditors as well. So I'm just trying to keep that in the back of my head as we begin discussing or as you guys begin discussing next steps. Anthony, you said Virgens, Middlebury, and Heinsberg are still deciding. Uh, are they deciding how they're going to determine to spend the funds, or they're deciding specifically what they're going to spend the funds on? Do they have committees like this? Um, both, actually. Virgens does not currently. Um, I've spoken to their town manager, and they're still deliberating on how to go about uh, community engagement. And I mentioned to him that we had formed a committee, et cetera, et cetera. So that kind of gave him some good ideas. And do Middlebury and Hinesburg have committees or how are they getting community involvement? I didn't speak too much to that as much as um, what they were thinking about. I know, I forget which one, I was trying to figure out um, paving's pretty important. And they were trying to figure out how to go about that because um seeing as arpa funding is all population based um with how much money you get uh the surrounding towns including us are at different levels of what they're able to spend so i think there's a lot more thought process going into that and from what i've also discussed with they've been very closely knit with their auditors as well So let's talk about um, ideas for gathering information from the general public. Um, and yeah, go. You want to just let it flow? Yeah, go. I saw you're like, you came on mute. I'm like, Chris is ready. Go. Yeah, this is one that excites me. Um, one of the things that 
the hard part with public engagement for most boards and things like this, we just have a public forum and try to get people to come out. Um, we try to bribe them maybe with like cookies and pizza and stuff. It really doesn't work that well. Um, you, you still just get the people who are there for their own purpose. They don't. They aren't looking at a bigger picture. And I think what we really need to make sure is that we get sort of that big picture concept. So one of the things that I noodled through was making it almost more of an event um, and, and sort of even making it a little bit family friendly. Um, one of the, doing almost like a, let's say at the high school, I'm just doing an arbitrary spot or at the elementary school, we do a spaghetti family dinner. Um, we offer up some sort of childcare for an hour or so after the parents stick around, we do a sort of basic charrette concept where it's just throw everything at the wall and we'll digest it later to try to bring in as many people as we can. And not just the classic, oh, we're hanging out at Holly Hall with cookies and oh, great, six people showed up. That didn't help at all. But make it sort of fun for, the, again, if, 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 uh, if you have young kids or, or kids in general, be able to go out and have, like I said, a spaghetti dinner, something like that. And then knowing that there's childcare for an hour, it, so you can actually go in and participate, I think would be helpful for so many folks in the community. So that was my first thought. It's a good one. It's worth noting that ARPA funding can be used to pay for refreshments and, and child care services and things like that, for especially for a meeting like that. I think that's a super idea. Let's keep coming up. Yeah. How about something at the 4th of July? Have a have a table or a booth nope. on the green. Nope. Nope. Oh, okay. <laughs> Is, are, are you shaking your head because you don't want to do it, Allison? Or because you're That's exactly you're right. To get? Yeah, right. two years without a parade, no way. Sorry. <laughs> um, well, I think it's a great idea. That's just I, me. That's just me. I well, love the idea. I, yeah. I, it's a great idea. I think the question is, you know, the, the how of it, right? Is it a booth or is it a suggestion box or, you know, can we come up with some type of QR code, you know, something people can do with technology? But yeah, I mean, we've got you know, a lot of people there. And I guess the question is only, you know, how do we weed out Bristol versus, um, you know, all the others. But I, I, I like the idea, Helen, of like, you know, where are people already gathering so we don't have to go try to get them together? Is there going to be, did I read that there's going to be like the bands again and food trucks and things like that? I don't know if there could be an informational booth somewhere like there. I do like the spaghetti dinner. I do like the gathering of people. Um, I think that was a wonderful idea. And I liked, Chris, I think that you were saying like, just put like paper up on walls and just let people write. I, I thought that was fantastic. There's also the events that are gonna be happening on Monday, the uh the offshoot of the bobcat events that happened last year um so that there'll be food trucks there i don't know if that's the one that you're particularly speaking about so that yeah that will be happening that just got approved at the select board level um but they those events were always very busy um and a lot of bristol residents obviously came to them so that would be a good good spot i think to reach out to people and it's a it's a family friendly affair so you get a good good mix of people I like the idea of um, suggestion boxes, maybe uh, in more than one location. The the if we can uh, if we don't mind getting comments from people outside of Bristol, uh, I think that might be a good way to get some interesting ideas. Do people want to weigh in on that? I mean, do we have concerns about whether we get suggestions and they're from people who are outside of the community, or is a good idea a good idea? I think if you have them identify where they're from, I think that would be fine. So that we, if, if we find out everyone wants to repave the, the lower part of Lincoln Road and it turns out it's all the Lincolnites, yeah, that might have some um, some bearing on it, but just it, it, you do a quick name, town you're from and what your suggestion is kind of suggest. Don't get too in depth with it and, 
I think that would be fine. It would help us sort of get a geographic feel for it. Right, and if- Or, uh, or even just Bristol <laughs> resident, yes or no. Yeah. So that would suggest some sort of pre-printed paper, a pre-printed -pre form perhaps with lines, and maybe it's just a half sheet of paper that we cut in half and lay it around or have a stack of them by the suggestion boxes. Maybe, do, do we maybe the Monday events, um, you could combine uh, and have an area where or somebody designated who could do some childcare and and maybe have a special um, couple of tables for people that would like to uh, talk about what they think Bristol needs, um, you know, and do make a sort of a subgroup where people, um, you know, can can really focus on that while they're at that larger event. Kind of like a speed dating, like <laughs> talk to an ARPA rep. Well, yeah, um, but I'm thinking that um, families, a lot of families have rather a, a range of kids. So they might want to have the kids that are under six anyway um, in, in something a little bit organized and uh, but the kids that are um, up seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, they're not going to be what right next to mom and dad. But they would be, you know, mom and dad can just say, "You stay on the the grass here." Um, but but I think we could, um, you know, have more than a booth. I mean, make some extras more available if they um, sort of sat around and became a kind of an instantaneous focus group. But I think also Mondays, you're gonna, you're gonna see mostly people from Bristol. And, uh, and I think you'd be very um, busy with a whole lot of different people on 4th of July and and that actually people might not hang around as long because there's stuff sort of all over town that they want to get to. The, the one age bracket or the one demographic, I can't come up with a great way of pulling in, which is actually a fairly large group of our population, um, are those without kids, the, the, the older, the older, the elder, how, whatever the politically correct term is for our seniors. Um, I, I have been trying, I, and, and with this, especially in the, the current health situation, we've got a lot of seniors that are nervous about being outdoor, uh, being in groups. So whether it's an outdoor thing, I, that's the one I'm struggling with, but I think it's a vastly important group that we, that, to get some input from. Um, and if anyone can come up with it, I think that would be so great. We might be able to um, work through the various uh, churches in this area um, because certainly they get clusters of seniors and they um, might be willing to have somebody from ARPA uh, come in briefly and and talk a little bit to people but there's a, the other the other people without kids are 20 somethings um who haven't really networked and, and the only uh thing i've thought of would be to go go down to thad's and and ask him if he knows how to get in touch with with you know the people that that haven't gotten married or haven't started having kids, um, you know, and find out where that where they hang out or how to how to reach them. Yeah. One one thing that just popped in my head when when Betsy said um, the the church is one thing I, I know just down the road from me that goes on. Um, there are senior meals uh, like the Masons do a senior meal every every couple of weeks or once a month. I think the Baptist Church does one. Uh, they seem to get great turnouts for those. Um, yeah. Again, maybe 
again, sitting outside, if it's a nice day at a card table with just a suggestion box and be there to answer questions and, and get their input from there, that might not be a terrible one. So. And, and maybe the, um, uh, the food pantry that's what, like once a month. Um, and so maybe there could be a, um, a flyer, uh, you know, with some checkoff boxes and, and areas to write something in uh, or a phone number to call and, uh, and an envelope that has a stamp on it. Yeah, and as you guys keep talking, I'm, I'm sort of starting to picture us as like a little dog and pony show um, where we have like a little banner behind us and a little suggestion box and we've got our little, you know, thing with the half sheets of paper, like Valerie said, and, you know, we have maybe, maybe Chris says, I'll go to the Mason's senior dinner and maybe Betsy says, I'll go to the food shelf on, you know, the June distribution and maybe I say, you know, I'll go um, hang out outside, you know, the bar <laughs> down on at burger night, you know, um, and it's, just, I don't know, like, is that too random? Is it, no. do, do we want to be more focused or if they just start seeing us everywhere no. and then we, they'll be we, like, we're already doing focusing. So this is, we need to do the other stuff. And I would love to have a little, um, stack of, of check off lists and, and stamped envelopes that um that i just keep in my car so if i end up talking to somebody in a parking lot or you know wherever and you say well wait, wait, wait could you, would you can i give you this yeah ali i do like the idea i don't know who said it about the qr code because i do know tons of people who just snap it and if there was a link that they could just fill in ready to go i don't even know like if you know how you know the bristol notes like on a on a, what, do, what am I, I'm a loss for words, but the like little posters and the ground, yeah. the little signage, if we had a QR code on that, I don't know, something like that, like along the green, um, especially with those Monday nights, like if there was just that there and they could snap it and then as they're listening to music and eating, fill it in or something, just because I, I know so many people gravitate towards that technology piece. Yes, and but those are people who can afford to have computers and the people who get missed by by us right. are the people who can't afford to have computers. So and I think we do both, right? So yeah. we have we right. have the the post the self mailer postcard, um, and we have the you know the QR code, and, and um, you can hand people the self mailer postcard. You can hand them the QR code, or they can just write it and put it directly in the box. Um, so we you know we set it up all three ways. Um, and everywhere we go, so we make it available to whatever's most comfortable for you. Yeah, I mean, one of just uh, running on Allison's concept, I'm thinking like if you were to set up, let's say in front of Shaw's on a Friday night or whatever, when a big yeah. shop or a Saturday at a big shopping day, on your way into the grocery store, hit the QR code and, and move on with your phone. That's, a, that's actually a great idea, Allison. I can develop a PDF of that half sheet of form with the lines that people and the checkbox, are you Bristol resident? Yes, no, that people could fill in, but then I don't know how to set up a button to send. So if they hit send, it automatically goes whoosh to wherever we want it to go. I, I don't know I how to do that. I can work on that done. I, I can work on a, on a, on a web-based form that we can gather oh. data with. That's easy peasy. Oh, cool. Um, do, you think it's so worth think, do you think it's worth soliciting ideas through Front Porch Forum? Yes, definitely. But I don't think that we have to, um, you know, I think that's absolutely part of it all along. And, and when do we do that? Do we do that before we do our little dog and pony outreach? Do we do it after? Do we do it before, during, and after? I think we can probably ask that multiple times, don't you? I think a Front Porch Forum posting that says, there are suggestions outlining what ARPA this committee is aiming to do. And there are suggestion boxes at the following six places. We will also be attending a variety of in-town events. And, and if none of that works for you, or if you want to respond right now, the yeah, link. send something to the front porch forum. But then right. somebody has to receive all those. 
Well, well can we have the link be a, like, yeah, you're saying that like a Google Forms or something, Chris? We okay. just give the link, give Valerie's email as the link. <laughs> no, but somebody has to receive all those. You'll never see me Betsy's again. Betsy's email. <laughs> I wish I could see your face, Betsy. No, no, I, I don't think there'd be that many, frankly, but, um, and I would love to see it appear in Front Porch Forum a number of times. Uh, I would rather you didn't print my phone number there, but just put me as the recipient of- We're joking. Yeah, we're, we're joking with you, Betsy. Yeah. No, we're, it'll be a, an online form. Yeah. Um, and, and and what the hope is, is that nobody is going to have to deal with email. The, the intent is that this will be just data gathering. That'll be at the end, we, we extract, we extract it out and I can sort, we can sort it and see what it is. It, it's not, nobody's going to have to sit there and read through hundreds right. or, or even possibly a thousand emails. I, that's yeah. not, that's not acceptable. Ian, you got your hand up. Um, before doing all of this, you should work to develop something that you could easily just replicate into these different formats. So I, I would recommend not having everyone run off in different directions, no. to develop one, this one and that. Make sure it's very you, clear, very simple. You met me, the, Ian, right? The, the print, right. But you know, people are excited about this. So We are excited. You know, do, I'm glad we're excited. Do the print thing, but then let's translate it into a Google form. But also, yeah. if you're capturing all that stuff, who's going to be in charge of that? You know, you need to work out those things or stuff's going to get lost. Yeah. In the show. Well, we're not going to right. just to be clear, um, since Ian makes the good point that we're not going to all start doing anything randomly yet. Um, this is our May meeting and we're having a conversation about ideas for gathering info from the general public. So this is a fabulous conversation. We're going to generate a whole lot of ideas. We're going to talk about them again in June. And we're not pulling the trigger yet. Uh, Mike. Yeah, perfect. I, I think these are all fantastic ideas. I guess in a related sort of line of thought my sense from the previous meetings was that there was a structure that uh jessica had suggested and perhaps in association with you porter where the goal of the focus groups was to try to provide some structure before we sought out individual responses and, and i fear a little bit in our enthusiasm that 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 we've deviated from that and that might be fine um but i'm wondering whether our plan of focus groups to help constrain those responses uh, is something that we want to consider in the context of this form. Because uh, right now it feels like we're excited about just here's a blank sheet of paper, tell me everything. And it sounded like that is a nightmare to deal with in terms of the data. Um, and so we may want to think about how we can blend this excitement, enthusiasm with how we come out of these focus groups and give a little bit of direct guidance. Do you want to weigh in on that, Jessica? Yes, I mean, you know, the more ideas you get, the better, of course, but somebody does have to sit down and go through each one of them, whatever format they come in on, and then find a way to organize and share them out. Otherwise, what you end up with is, you know, an Excel sheet that has like pages and pages and pages of ideas, many of them the same ideas, but we don't know. And so you do want to be careful about, you know, how much data you have to go through um, a way. But I also think that, you know, soliciting open ideas is also good. Maybe do a couple like high profile things. And then for everything else, you know, maybe it could be a suggestion box at the town office or, or poor Valerie is like the point of origin. At least they're all going to one spot and then being shared. Um, and then the other thing to think about is um, the use of surveys. So surveys by themselves aren't usually really good at collecting ideas, but they're really good at prioritizing or seeing like a feeling thermometer, how excited are people about different ideas. So once you come up with a list, like let's say that, you know, people are mentioning certain ideas over and over and over again, and you come up with a list of like the top 10 or top 15 or something like that, that's really great to send out in a survey and get people to say how much they want that. Um, you can either ask them to do that, like, you know, strongly agree, agree, that sort of scale, or you can actually force them to rank these things. So if you give them 10 ideas, have them rank it, you know, number one choice, number two choice, number three choice. Um, and that's a really good way then to try to generate how people feel about different ideas. 
then as the committee, you'll take all of that information and you'll make recommendations, but at least you'll get a sense for ideas where, you know, one person came up with it and no one's excited about it versus ideas that people are pretty excited about. Yeah, I'd like to say something about the, the wording of whatever we put together. Um, I think that the, um, the average reading level in the U.S. is now somewhere around sixth grade. And so... Hard. So words like infrastructure would not be appropriate. So we need to try to figure out how to describe the categories in ways that somebody in, well, okay, let's say fourth grade would readily understand. And uh, because if it's got polysyllables in it, then a lot of the target people are going to toss it in the trash. And if it's not let's say uh, Ariel 14 point bold, um, your seniors aren't gonna read it, you know, cause they won't be able to see it. So I think all of that sort of thing needs to be taken into consideration in designing what we're putting out. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, hey, Jessica, you actually beat me to the punch on that one. I was sort of, these gathering the data, yeah, I was sort of thinking of a hybrid, especially on either a form or on a paper. Not only is it like where you're from, but it's sort of like, here's a list that we pull out of the, pulling from Mike's ideas. Here are like the top 10 things that came out of that, let's say. What is important to you? And then have a comment section that anything else, what other ideas do you have? And then I, there we have some data that we can actually sort manipulate and, and utilize in, in a valuable technique. That sounds like a great idea and a lot less work. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I think that we always wanna leave the door open so that anyone in the public always knows that if they have a red hot idea, they can share it. So there's no point where we're telling people they can't share their ideas, um, but um, hopefully we'll come into our June meeting with some structure from uh, the focus groups. We can, I, I do want to put it all the way out there wide open on Front Porch Forum and take it. Um, and as Jim had suggested at a previous meeting, you know, put something in the Addison Independent and, you know, engage people that way um, too. So I do want them to leave the door open, um, but also to use the focus group information and so at our June meeting, we'll have some stuff from the focus group. We can start to massage these ideas and I wanna keep generating them for another moment or two if we can. Um, and then we'll decide you know, how we wanna go from there. So all good, Helen. Um, I think it's important and I think it'll be very challenging to do in a simple way to say that this money cannot be used for just anything that we want that there are restrictions and there are guidelines of what this, I mean, you have the, the list of um, the different categories and what it can be used for. So if a whole bunch of people get really excited about equestrian center north of town <laughs> and you get, and, and, it, and it becomes really popular and public and everybody's really excited about it. And then we say, well, I'm sorry, we, we can't do that. Well, let's, let's don't solicit ideas let's don't solicit excitement about stuff that we're not going to consider. I mean, I, I understand you want to keep it really open to get great ideas, but I don't think you want every idea that comes into someone's mind about how Bristol can spend a million dollars. If in fact, 80% of the feedback we get is inappropriate and we can't do it. And then we look like a bunch of jerks that we got all this really great feedback, but I'm sorry, we can't do that. And we can't do that. So how to solicit the kind of information we want. Yeah. But before you go, Valerie, I saw you raising your hand. Um, I wanna say that I, I agree with you, Helen, and I do wanna put the message out there to the community um, that our committee's goal is to make recommendations to the select board um, based on the ARPA guidelines. Um, <clears throat> I'm sus suspecting perhaps that you were raising your hand, maybe Valerie, to say like, because of the way we receive the funding, that there's a, more, a little bit more flexibility, perhaps. I don't, do you wanna, maybe I shouldn't presuppose what you were gonna say. About <laughs> no, it. the only thing I was just going to uh, mention, earlier we talked about uh, not wanting to limit 
people's ideas because stuff that might not fit into the ARPA framework might be uh, really good ideas in some other way, like uh, some other, like they can be implemented by another group and at another time, but it's those are ideas worth hanging on to, but just kind of put them in a parking lot somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Chris. Yeah, and that sort of dovetails into um, uh, when we're done here, one a question I had, uh, or one of the things I, I think we need to sort of, to help us also, also as a group is, in some way create sort of our criteria of what fits and what doesn't, what, what, and, and at a high level, I don't want to get into the, into the, oh, it's got to be more than $20,000 and only spend on um, that, but things like it, it's got to maximize the number of people impacted or, or some very high level criteria that we all can work through. I don't think that's a discussion for tonight, but I think that's something we should all be really starting to noodle through so that we can then focus our efforts in that direction. Thanks, I agree, that's a great idea. I would love to hear from some of our committee members who we haven't heard from, um, if you have, um, thoughts or ideas on um, how we might engage, reach out to, or gather ideas from the general public. Anybody who hasn't had a chance to weigh in want to pass along some thoughts? Okay, then. Those of you who've already shared thoughts, if you want to share more. I think on I think on um, you know what if if we do any kind of uh, trying to get them into categories, um, we need to keep in mind and and maybe the public needs to keep in mind that uh, for some projects let us say projects that have to do with with busing or having a um a local bus that is um an ev bus which is definitely covered by the arpa funding um that we could do it in conjunction with other towns you know, we could on a on a project that Bennett that goes through several towns, we can we can merge funding with other towns. Okay. All right. Well, we will continue this conversation at a future meeting. Um, this is a terrific start. Keep the ball rolling, gather ideas, um, and let's share again. Um, so um, at our next meeting, we'll hopefully be reviewing stuff from focus groups. I'm guessing that may um, you know, take up a significant chunk, but um, I'm imagining that agenda will be um, trying to digest that information and think about how we're going to want to use that moving forward. And then um, exploring these ideas again and thinking about what that schedule is going to look like. And just from a calendar standpoint, it's May. If we meet again in June, um, and I do want to actually talk about our summer meeting schedule, um, that might mean that we might not actually do any of this public gathering stuff until mid late June or possibly even July. So just want to, yeah, I think Chris is being like, yes, of course, time marches on. But I just wanted to, you know, manage those expectations about when and how we're reaching out to people. Um, I do think, though, that we're, you know, moving apace. I, I feel good about this, um, you know, the rate that we're moving. Um, we do have time to make some thoughtful decisions here. So, um, but I just wanted to lay that out that we're not like necessarily going to be going out to the public in June, but we'll be talking more in June and then going out later in the summer, probably. All right. I think we're ready for number five under regular business, which is anything else. <laughs> Anything else? I'm not sure what that means. Okay. Um, so next steps um, to summarize. Um, let's see. 
The invitations are going to go out for the nonprofit group. The school and youth group um, is going to have some conversations about the questions and the structure of that meeting. And that's going to happen. And then we'll share out for everybody else. Um, Val's going to do the doodle poll for municipal employee volunteers um, and see if we can set the time for that Friday, May 7th. I'm going to stay on the call with um, the business group folks, and we're going to try to come up with a date for um, moving ahead with a business group focus group. Um, I think those are our next steps. Did I leave out? Anybody else make a promise to do something today that I didn't just capture? Okay. So we've done pretty well meeting on the first Monday. Um, but I am looking at the summer and um, I am realizing that I am actually going to be um, out of town on the first Monday of uh, June. I will be in Vancouver and on the first Monday of August. Oh, no, that looks good. Okay, so I'm only gone one. And the first Monday of July is the fourth. So I don't know if other people um, know what their summer plans look like, if we want to try to adjust our meetings or if you wanna carry on in June without me, um, which is totally fine. Chris can do that. <laughs> I look like it's here in the headlights. Um, that's fine. Um, so, I mean, we're certainly gonna need to move our July meeting regardless, um, but I don't know. Monday works are really the only night I've got. Um, in the week. Monday. How about the second, second Monday of the week, of the month, in, in June and July? So that was their select board meetings. <clears throat> yeah, um, the third one actually, I can do first and third. I have commitments on the second and fourth currently. So that would so. be June 20th. So that would be June 20th? Yep. And, Ju and July 18th. Well, I can't make June 20th, but that's the only one. Well, if we stick with the June 6th, then Chris can ch uh, chair the meeting. Yeah. And we'll have to address the July meeting as well, or just not have a July meeting. I mean, that's, but. That's a possibility. But it almost seems like, I mean, we've got three months in a row that if we do the first one quarters out and, and that's sort of when, when your pilot is not there, we, we sort of may end up off course a little bit, so. Um, okay, so we have are we talking about July, June 6th and the July 18th? Is that where? I'm good with that. I can do that. I mean, I probably can't do June 8th, but that's fine. So that means, are we going to be trying to do something for 4th of July or any other early summer mm -hmm. festivals at all this year? Or are we just scratching that off at this point? I don't see any way to pull that together between now and the 4th of July, from my honest opinion. Yep. That's, I just wanted that to be clear because it's May, we're yeah. talking about one more yeah. meeting and there's, I, at this point, we're not going to have anything put together for, to be prepared for that, so. And I think what I want to take forward from that idea that Helen had is to look for places where people are already gathering. I think that's the brilliance of that is where are the people already gathering and how do we, you know, get ourselves in front of them there. And we, I think we might still be able to take advantage of some opportunities later in the summer or early fall. Um, and, to do that. And, and on that, just as one that popped in my head just now when we're looking for like spots where there's tons of people, nice hot weekend day, at the river, there's a billion people at Byron Lips. So, <laughs> yeah. so that on the list of possibilities. Okay, so we have, uh, we have June 6th, and then, so July is the only time we're moving it. We're just gonna move it to the third Monday, which is the 18th instead of July 4th. And then in August, we'll be back on for the regular first Monday. Yeah. Okay. 
Great. Which is the first, August 1st? Mm -hmm. I think it is, yeah, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Great. Uh, Valerie? So one thing that occurs to me is as, as we talk about possibly spending or incurring expenses such as spaghetti dinners, maybe even printing, uh, child care services, whatever else, <clears throat> that uh, for Monday's select board agenda, we should probably include uh, an item in our regular agenda item for ARPA updates is request for funding authorization, uh, possibly uh, ask the select board to authorize up to $500 of ARPA funds to be used for public information solicitation, public engagement activities. So $500 just comes to mind. I don't know if, uh, if there's a more reasonable number, higher or lower. My, my gut is to, to ask to start at a thousand and not that we have to spend all that, but it's easier right. if we're given a thousand, we only spend 300, that's a great day. But yep. I think okay. we'll the last second have to be like, oh crap, we only have for four dollars short. <laughs> yep. Sounds good. We'll do. Oh my god. Okay. Oh, right. Uh, what's next? Uh, other business? Are you laughing at me, Helen? I was like, I was looking at my calendar. Yeah, we're all just kind of staring at the screen, waiting for somebody okay. in charge yeah. to move us no all other business. There. Is there any other business? <laughs> okay, so we will adjourn. It's 8.13. Um, and I think I said this last time, but um, I'm trying to keep the agenda between 7 and 8.30. Um, so, um, I hope I get points this time for ending early as opposed to last time where we did go a few minutes over. Um, but if um, Ian and Betsy and John can stay on, although did we lose John? We might have. But why don't Ian, Betsy, and I see if we can find a date for our business group? Um, and uh, if Valerie, you or Chris want to stay on too, so you can check. I don't know if you both have access to like look at the the room with the owl and tell us what's free because that helps too. Otherwise, I'll just have to email Valerie tomorrow. No, I, I can stick around for a little bit. Okay, cool. So one, right. one thing I was saying on your elephant quarter, I, I don't, if you wanted to, if, or if anyone here has time tomorrow afternoon, um, I can make myself available in the office and give you a quick tutorial of how to basically do a hands-on if you want. Okay, are you, you're in the office tomorrow? In the afternoon. Uh, I'm okay. in Moncton in the morning, but I can make myself available in the afternoon, early evening. So, okay. Uh, I, I have a client at one, and I'm not sure what time will be done. So, um, I don't know. Does anybody else want to take them up on that dentist office? It would just depend uh, on what time. I'm helping with the arts festival tomorrow afternoon until five. So, that might not work. I'm I'll available. Thursday and I'll, I'll, you know, leer over Meredith's shoulder and figure it out. Yeah, and, and I can also make myself available uh, Wednesday morning between like 9 and 11 or Wednesday late afternoon, like after 3.30 or so. So if you guys want to just noodle that through, shoot me an email, whoever wants to do it. Okay, um, Wednesday morning. Okay, thank you. Yeah, just noodle those times through and, and we'll figure it out. Is it once, okay. Once you do it once, you'll be like, oh God, that's so easy. So. Say so. It is. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thank, Thank you, you, Porter. Thank you, you, Porter. See you all on Thursday. All right. Bye. Thanks. All right. Don't go away, Betsy. Don't go away, Ian. I can drop off, though, right? Valerie, I think you can, right? Because you can look at the um, yeah. room. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good night, guys. Um, so, Ian, I think that, um, Betsy, didn't we talk about saying we thought the daytime would be better for um, business people, or do you think evening? Um, well, I mean, the, 
<clears throat> kinds of, of business people that are running a business um, can't really not be there during the day. Right. I mean, it depends on the business, right? So, right. If somebody has a home office and they're just working at the computer or something, they've got control over their schedule. But, um, but I mean, I can think of, of a lot of blue collar professions where um, you just can't not be there. Right. Or a storefront might be able to do certain hours in the morning before things, you know, before they open the shop. Um, and, you know, well, it, I mean, it's a, it's an earlier day, the blue collar world. I mean, you know, like, like Thad, he starts at 615. Mm -hmm. um, uh, other groups are going to send their people out at probably eight. But that means that everybody got to the shop at seven or 730 to get their materials. So if you say, OK, so we'll meet ahead, that means that we're going to ask them to come in and meet at about five in the morning. No, I was, I mean, I think <laughs> I'm imagining an eight to five thing. And uh, obviously it's not going to be uh, a solution that works for every single group. Yeah. And um, so maybe we just go ahead and, and, and see the kinds of business people that can come during the day. Okay. Uh, I mean, I, it, it doesn't matter to me. Um, and, and probably your blue collar business people aren't going to come to a meeting anyway, because they hate meetings. So, um, I mean, that's, that's been my experience. I have heard that clearly articulated. <laughs> I too hate meetings. Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's not just, <laughs> it's not just blue collar people. That's it. True story right there. Um, um it's a I universal mean, feeling. <laughs> um, in terms of the, the, the businesses that I'm most familiar with are the main street businesses, just cause I've dealt mm -hmm. with them more. And so oftentimes, if we've tried to do meetings, engage people uh, before shops open, it's always worked before 930, before 10, which seems to be the average right. in Bristol. Um, so you could do that. Uh, or you try to convince people to come to an evening meeting, which might capture more people, including blue collar uh, and service, service industries. Um, but it's whether those people will come to the meeting. I think if we can reach out to people that we know personally or have a, a relationship with perhaps then we might be able to persuade people. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know with that thousand dollars how good uh, some refreshments could be at the meetings. Um, Big pots of but, coffee. Yeah, exactly, uh, or something that they like. Some so do we have? Do we have a liquor license in uh, <laughs> <laughs> at, in the conference room? No, I'm thinking this is, that would be an, that would be an evening thing though, not, okay. not a morning thing. Yeah, <laughs> little nightcap. <laughs> yeah. um, but I mean, I'm fine. I mean, the meetings that we're holding so far are evening, you know, a 530 or a seven. So I don't mind continuing that and just seeing how many people might be interested or just trying to get a pulse. I can ask Main Street businesses, but I, I'd like to before we do all that, I'd like to have an idea and maybe Betsy and I chat offline in terms of who we're thinking about reaching out to. You know, there's a number of Main Street businesses and I need to sort of start looking at my list and saying, well, who's going to who should we engage you know um are we trying to get as wide a range of of different types of businesses probably yes so if there are three eateries do we just ask one of them um you know that kind of thing and i don't know betsy if you have your i know you've been talking to people who you have thoughts on who might be interested or who you'd reach out to uh yeah um i i did ascertain i guess from val that there there doesn't exist a, a list of the businesses that exist in Bristol. Um, and, you know, well, there sort there of does, but it, it's, it, it's, uh, it's, on, um, it's online, it's on the Bristol Core website. Yeah, we have, th this, okay. that's, there's a web list, which is on a, an outdated website. Uh, there's also our Core's internal list, which is quite uh, large. Um, and it's a big spreadsheet. Okay. So I'm happy to send that to you and you can look through. It's not completely up to date just because stuff changes, um, but it's it's fairly decent. Um, Porter is waving at us. So no. is that, um, 
Is the list that core has of core members or of all businesses? No, core doesn't have membership anymore. It hasn't had that for oh. five or six years. Essentially, it's just a, it's a collected list. It used to be the membership list. And then it was just when I came aboard mm -hmm. six there, years ago, I said, well, we, we won't do membership. We'll just do contribution. And so that list became contributors as well as just building the list of businesses, um, including mm -hmm. outside of the of the designation. So it's quite large, but but some of the businesses are no longer there. It just hasn't been updated in a couple of years, but it's fairly mm -hmm. decent. So, so I'm happy how to large share. is large? I don't know, like probably 100 or 150 people on there or m maybe more. Because there's a, I mean, there's a lot of businesses outside the district. We never covered sure. those initially. Like Livingston's. Because, yeah, exactly. Um, Mm -hmm. and mainly metals and i mean there's there's lots and lots and there's lots that aren't on there that need to be put on it's just a matter of time to put them all on and that was never our focus but i always wanted to include because it's just nice to be able to to be able it to reach is. out at any point and talk to businesses um mm -hmm. they are part of the town even if core wasn't supporting them in in that way but i'm happy to uh, share that list i have done in the past with other other entities right um okay i'm just uh since since i doubt that i would manage to um, know how to open a spreadsheet. Could I have you send it, let us say, to Patty King, who does do spreadsheet stuff and who would be willing to show me it on her computer? Or maybe I, I could, we could I sit could also, down together. Yeah, I could. I Why could don't meet maybe you, we just sit down together, Betsy, you and I and Ian, if he's available and John, sure. if he's able. And um, and the three or four of us mm -hmm. can go through the list together and talk about, um, you know, we're looking for 10 to 12 at the most, you know, really yeah. eight to 10 people for a focus group. Um, and we could do two things. We could personally reach out to, you know, 10 or 11 business entities and invite them to come to a focus group. Um, and we could also send something to all of the businesses and invite them to send us ideas or thoughts. Um, after the focus group, if we want to, too. So we could be wholly inclusive, but also um, handpick focus group participants. So maybe we look at it together. Where would we do that? You know, the town office. Okay. You can come to my house. Outside Anywhere. somewhere, if the weather's nice. Yeah. Um, um, I will, I have a little bit of time tomorrow morning. So this is giving me a kick in the pants to update that list. And so okay. when we decide on a time to meet, uh, it'll be fairly decently updated uh, and I'll print it out on some large paper and then we can take a look and go through. And then, yeah, I mean, we could just meet at the bandstand. That's a nice hangout place and we could go through the so, list. Um, I'm coming back to the meet at my house idea. I actually have a contractor here from nine till probably three on Wednesday. So I kind of can't leave the house because um, I kind of have to be available for that. So, but I'm, I'm basically free Wednesday from okay. nine to three. Um, so you do have a nice porch swing. I love a lovely porch swing. I actually also have a nice kitchen counter. Betsy, I, would, I would be available um, after one o'clock on Wednesday. So maybe one o'clock or one fifteen. Well, one o'clock is fine. Okay, so <laughs> let's say one o'clock on Wednesday. Um, Ian will bring the list. If I can't make it on that day. I can just send you the list and you, you are that's able to print it out. To, okay. That's to Porter's house or to the bandstand? My house. Porter, Porter's okay. house. Tw 27 Garfield Street. Mm -hmm. Big porch swing. Um, and I will call John. Do I have his phone number, Valerie? It yeah. should be on that list of contacts. Okay. Great. And then we'll talk about dates. So we'll talk about how to reach people. We'll talk about dates and we'll move ahead. Okay. It might be might be good to think if we can do it in May. You know, obviously we've got three meetings scheduled. Um, so there's potentially um, <clears throat> like May 16th is sort of in between those meetings or no, there's actually the one on the 7th. I, I would sort of go uh, maybe a little towards the end of the month just so that we give people a little more time. Because if we don't meet till Wednesday the 4th to chat about it, if we pick a date um, and start reaching out, I'd like to give people two full weeks. Okay. Yeah, so that would push us into Memorial Day, which is the 30th, and then the 31st. Well, the um, week of the 23rd, yeah. Right. There's a select board meeting on the Monday. Um, 
but for the rest of the week, it looks fairly open. I think in terms of town. I think it's fairly evening, open. I think yeah, the twenty sixth was. I know the twenty sixth was open. Yeah. Okay. Well, if we're talking evening, I have meetings Wednesday and Thursday that week, but I'm open on Tuesday. Okay, so potentially so doing Tuesday the twenty fourth. Okay. If if we think evening Tuesday the twenty fourth, should I pencil that in? Yes, let's pencil it in just so we have a date that we can work from. And where would that be? Town offices. I think we keep the meetings all all in the same place just for ease of use. And then for those who wish to attend in person, there'd be someone there or multiple people there. And those who wish to attend on Zoom, the screen is there. So we'll be able to see any attendees uh, via Zoom. Again, we do like the seven o'clock one. Yeah. Okay. Seven's a nice, nice number. Okay. Great. I can do that. My pencil is in. Okay. Great. So then, I will see you, Betsy, on Wednesday, mm -hmm. and maybe Ian. Yeah. For the uh, Val, quick question for the town one, which is on the Friday, on the twenty seventh. I know the offices are closed, but most staff are there at the offices, correct? It's just closed to the public. Uh, correct. Okay. So that that won't affect people's schedules having to come in to a particular meeting. And we can, yeah, and most okay. everybody has their own code to get in through the lock. Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. Betsy, um, do you have a laptop computer or do you have a desktop computer? I have both. If you want I just to don't know how to use them, that's all. Well, I was going to say, if you want to bring <laughs> your laptop on Wednesday, um, if there's any, if you have questions. Um, oh, but I'm the... Gonna, um let's see yeah it can handle it can receive emails i think yeah if you want to yeah i, I i'm fine with bringing that okay great okay thank you ian thank you valerie thank you betsy okay okay see you, see you in a couple days okay bye bye